Obama's parents were from Kenya, but he was an American born and became US president. Outstanding man. He was not called an invader. Akbar was Indian born. So how can he be an invader? <laughs> okay, wonderful question. Okay, look, Gaurav, your logic makes sense. My question is this. How old is the United States of America? It is less than 250 years old. How old is India? It is thousands of years old. Do we need to ape this new upstart nation that is already crumbling? Do we need to ape them? Or should we have our own standards of whom we define as our citizens and whom we define as outsiders? There are two concepts of citizenships of citizenship. One is jus soli, the other is jus sanguinis. Jus soli is the right of citizenship if you are born on a nation's soil. Jus sanguinis is you get the right to be a citizen if you are descended. If you sanguinis means blood. If you have descent by blood in a nation. Babar had no Indian blood. So if he was born in, I mean, Akbar, Akbar, we're talking about Akbar, right? Akbar did not have Indian blood. He was a Turk. Being born on Indian soil doesn't make him an Indian, according to Jus Sanguinis. And today, in 21st century India, the nation of India does not recognize Jus Soli, citizenship by birth. India does not recognize citizenship by birth. So according to the Indian modern definition of citizenship, Akbar was not a citizen of India. And according to our age-old traditions, you can be born in this country, doesn't make you a citizen. You have to be invested in the culture of the country. DNA doesn't matter. I mean, DNA does matter uh, to some extent. This is not a DNA question. It's about... It's about uh, being born on the soil. So Akbar was born in India, but was he Indian? Did Was he Indian by culture? Did he practice Indian culture? Did he speak an Indian language? He did not. He His actions were anti-Indian culture. He tried to promote his foreign culture in India. So how does it make him an Indian? He is a, a person born in India to foreigner parents who was trying to promote and spread a foreign culture in India. So that doesn't make him an Indian. That makes him an invader. Kanishka was a descendant of foreigners, the great king Kanishka. He spent his life promoting Indian culture and promoting the Indian national interest and civilizational interest. He spread Indian culture far and wide across Asia. He expanded in India's military, India's cultural, civilizational and economic and military footprint by waging vigorous military campaigns far beyond India's present geographical boundaries. So that is a true Indian. Akbar did the opposite. He waged war within India to stamp out Indian culture, despite whatever your textbooks have taught you about him, about him being a secular king and all that nonsense. So Akbar was a foreigner. He was not Indian by any means. You can keep believing it, some of you. I mean, that's your choice. My view is very clear. He was not Indian by any by any definition whatsoever.